Okay, so you were asked to work out the supplementary angles of the following, and supplementary means? Rosie? Yeah, that's fine, that you add them up to make 180. So um, these are the answers for these ones. It shouldn't have been a bit of a shock to you. 150 degrees, one, no, just 60 degrees, and 45 degrees. So if you have a look at these here, what do these have in common? Where well, I've got stars next to them. True. Not quite. I, I, I like where you're going, but that's not quite what I wanted to um, aim for right now. Something as simpler, simpler than that. Sorry. Uh, the ones with stars are the opposite of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've already had a cue, so you've got to pay attention to you, not just me, but the people who are talking as well. Uh, let me just show, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Like 10 degrees is an exact value. As, uh, sorry, 10 degrees is also an acute angle and so on, but specifically these three are angles that we have um, exact values for. Or to be a bit more precise, um, only, only in the, for context, um, we have exact trig values for it, right? So we know what the sine of a sine of 60, the sine of 45, and the sine of 30 is. Same thing with tan, same thing with cosine. So we've got exact trig values, which means that without a, um, without a calculator, we can work out the sine of 30, the sine of 60, the sine of 45. I'll leave that with you to have a crack at, and then I'll unpack if you're not too sure. Okay. So what I asked you to do in question one is absolutely linked to what I'm asking you to do in question two. Can you see that? Okay, I'll shut up. Go. You've got two minutes. If you need to get more food, grab more food. But I'm going, when my watch says 9.45, I'm moving on. Yeah, if you have to use the table, try and do it without the table to start with and then just look at the table to check. Yep, yeah, you've got to... That's got to be a um, an explicit thing that you've got to put um, time to, yeah. Or at least be able to do the triangles quickly so you can figure it out. Yeah, but like I was saying to Jeremy, you really need to make it a pro not a, well not a priority, but make it an explicit intention to memorise them. Um, the more of a um, what do you call it? The more of a that table that becomes a crutch. Yeah, the harder it will be to go on. Grab food if you need to. Moving on in less than a minute. I don't want people wandering up and down while I'm instructing. So if you want to grab food, grab it now. Okay, either you're there or you're not, I reckon. So these values here, are, uh, and plus a bunch of other ones, are going to be angles that you're going to, over time, recognise instantly as those um, special supplementary angles, as in special to the exact value um, acute angles, right? You, you will over time, but it's something that you're going to have to do um, to get practice into, I think. So... Um, but explicitly, if I was just going to go through steps, I suppose, I would I would be using, I'll be saying sine 135, I need to find the acute angle. I know that 135 is between 90 and 180. And so I say that the sine of 135 is equal to the sine, I do this in one step in my head really, but I'm just writing it down explicitly so you can see it. The sine of 180 minus 35. Yeah, thanks. The sine of 180 minus 135, but then I have to work out whether it's positive or negative. And again, without drawing a unit circle, in my head I'm visualising the unit circle, I'm seeing that the angle is in the first and second quadrant, and either all students take care, so S is, is the second quadrant, 
is positive or um, I don't think I've done that with you though, Rosie, so don't worry about that. Um, or simply, simply by knowing that if the angle is in the, even better than that um, um, mnemonic in a way, even better, if you're visualising where that angle is resting in your head, um, just for the video sake, I'll just say I'm doing it on the whiteboard next to it because if you're watching this video back, do it in your head. If you're sort of visualising this in your head and you're winding that, that angle over here, then you know that sign is the y-axis, right? You know? So it's the y-axis which is positive in this instance. Does that kind of make sense? That's, in a way, deeper than saying all students take care. It's because it's because you're actually making a link to what sign really means. And the more you're actually using that idea of I know it's positive because sine of theta is positive in the second quadrant, that's even better than saying I know it's positive because it's the S in all students take care, I reckon. Anyway, so it's positive sine 1, 8. So I don't need to add a sign to it because sine is positive. All students take care, South Australian Technical College, cast, whatever you want to use. So that's equal to the sine of 45 degrees. I know that the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 on 2, so the sine of 135 degrees is root 2 on 2. Is that okay? I'm just going to squish that in a bit more. Notice, by the way, I'm really not doing this um, on purpose, that sometimes I'll use brackets around my um, sine, cos and tan function, sometimes I don't. You are allowed to do either. There's no right or wrong. Um, I usually use brackets to enforce that it's a function, but you don't, strictly speaking, have to. Okay, cool. So cos 120, same deal again. In your head, the 120 degrees is in that second quadrant. All students take care. S is, is the only one that's positive. Cosine is negative. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Or you can think of the um, unit circle as the... As the um, uh, axes in your head. Know that 120 degrees would mean the x-axis is negative. That's the cosine. Cosine is negative and therefore we are going to have cos 120 equals negative cos 180 take 120 which is negative cos of 60. No, not while I'm teaching. Sorry, back you go. I, I'm sorry but I said it really clearly. I don't want movement while I'm teaching cos of 60. And what's the cos of 60? Without looking at your table, anyone can tell me? Half? I can't remember. Negative a half. So it's negative a half then. Okay. Is that all right? So again, that visual I think is better than cast in a way because you're continually reminding yourself why it is as it is. And tan of 150, um, based upon yesterday's lesson, Tan of 150 is in that second quadrant. Visualize it in your head. We know that tan is the slope. Is the slope positive or negative? Negative. So good, isn't it? So you just say it's negative. I just, no, I don't know, sorry. I'll, I'll get off my soapbox, but I just like the fact that you're using almost like a first principles approach rather than a cast diagram thought. You're right, I think so. The thing is, when you start doing lots and lots and lots of rotations, it will still make sense what you're doing. So 180 minus 150, which is equal to um, negative 10. Sorry, I'm squishing. I just want to get it into this one slide. And what's the, I actually can't remember, what's the tan of 30? Three over three? Yep. So... Minus root 3 on 3. By the way, if you do write it as minus 1 on root 3, they will accept that in, in the exams. Um, if I'm teaching, how well is your receptiveness of my teaching if you're having a chat at the same time? Not great. If you're trying to get clarification, maybe it might be best if it's rooted through me rather than having a chat because you might miss out on other stuff. Clarification? I'm not saying cast is wrong, Ambrosia, because if I said cast was wrong, I'd be wrong. I'm saying as an alternate way of memorising cast, 
by visualizing where the angle is hitting and remembering that sine is pos that sine is the y axis, cosine is the x axis, and tan is the um, the gradient. It's a more robust way of thinking about what is happening with those angles rather than just remembering a, a word. Will it get you the same result? Yes. Which one promotes deeper understanding connections? The first one. Yeah, so cast is fine as a, mnemon as a mnemonic, but deeper thinking, visualise it in your head like I've been suggesting. Yep, cool. Okay, yeah, I'll zoom out now so you can see it. There we go. Again, can I really strongly encourage you, especially if you've done Maths Extended last year, to really explicitly make the connections here with what we've been talking about, the unit circle, and the um, six questions I've got there in slide three, rather than saying, oh, yes, I remember from last year, sine of zero is one. No, I'd actually want this to be a you make the connections um, exercise rather than how good's your memory, right? So go for it. A, B, C. There's two, two sets of ABCs there. Go for it. I don't care. I don't know why you want to do it in the back of your book. But... Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying you don't need to memorize the acronym or the mnemonic. And I've, in slide four there, I've just put the um, the unit circle just to give you a bit of a, a reminder that the unit circle works on a, uh, a, a line of length one, line segment of length one. It's called a unit circle because if I traced the tip of that line around the Cartesian plane, it makes a circle of length of radius one, hence it's a unit circle. And then theta is always the angle between the x-axis and so really make those connections. And if you remember something, then confirm your memory with the connection. So either either way, I want you to, in your brain, make that explicit connection between what we've been talking about in the unit circle and what those values could be. Remember, sine of zero, cos of zero, and tan of zero cannot be extracted effectively from a real life triangle. You can't have a triangle with an angle of zero. That wouldn't exist. You can't have a triangle, a right angle triangle, beg your pardon. You can't have a right angle triangle where one of the angles is 9, uh, where a second angle, oh, I suppose you can do, but where a second angle is 90. Yep. Sorry? What is, what is your understanding of what we see there? So, so, so what is cos of, so where would cos zero be? No, because remember that sine x cos, sine of the angle comma cos of the angle. Yeah. Oh, can't, let me start again. The cosine of the angle and the sine of the angle is the xy coordinate one unit out. One unit out. Oh. Uh, hence unit circle. Yeah. Right? So what would be the x coordinate? when it's zero degrees. Look at the unit circle. Always. So you know that word unit in unit circle? Whenever you see that, and I'm not being facetious, whenever you see the word unit in that, it's talking about one one of, yeah. Grab food if you need to, because we're gonna move on in a sec. Get something for her. Get her a blue, just get a one blueberry. They're full of antioxidants, so if you, blueberries are good for you.
for anyone that's watching this video back later, I apologize for all the random discussions we have. I just, every time I pause the video, I then forget to record it again. So I'm just leaving it running. So for future students, I apologize. I told you to get her a blueberry. Okay. Uh, that was nearly, nearly funny. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you've either got it or you haven't. So again, get out of your head, get out of what you remember. The idea is to think of sine and cos as the X and Y, well, I keep on saying it around the wrong way, cos and sine as being the X and Y coordinate and tan being the gradient. So when I have the sine of zero, that means the line would be along here, right? No angle at all. And so the sine of zero would be the y coordinate. There is no run, sorry, there is no rise. And so the sine of zero would be zero. The cos of zero would be one. Same, de same deal, right? It'd be one unit out, but it'd be resting along the x-axis. And so it would be one. No, it wouldn't be. That would be the gradient, wouldn't it, Jeremy? Jeremy just said it would be 1 over 0, wouldn't it? But no, because that would be a gradient calculation. And in fact, if you did that, that would be run over rise, which is not nothing anyway. Yeah, sure. So um, I wasn't going to draw on it, but I'll just um, draw and then uh, undo it, right? So... If I'm talking about an angle of zero, remembering that the angle is always taken away from the x-axis in a counterclockwise direction, an angle of zero would be like that. Oops, not quite that far, that far, right? So that would have a length one because, it's, because it always is. The, units, the unit part of unit circle means it's always the distance one unit out. Always, always, always. So whenever you see the word or hear the word unit in mathematics, it's often referring to a, a one of something, okay? That's why it's called the unit circle. So that's what that green line there is what zero degrees looks like. So what does x, y equal? Well, that means we've got one in the x direction and zero in the y direction. And what does that mean in terms of our sine and cosine? Well, that means that the cos of zero must be the x coordinate and the sine of zero is the y coordinate. Just sort of click, click, click. Awesome. Everything is just reliant on that idea. So if you get this idea, then the rest should be fine, I reckon. Maybe I'll leave that green in there for, um, for our notes as well. So that's one. The next one will be 90 degrees. I wonder how you went with that. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. The tan would be the, gra the gradient, right? So the gradient is zero rise for a run of one. So the gradient is zero. So I can write zero in here as well. Sine of zero is zero, cos of zero is one, tan of zero is zero. And again, all of it can be visualized from the unit circle. Good so far? Okay, I'm assuming you've had a crack at 90, even if you haven't got there. Let me just do it in a different color and give you the same sense. So that would be something like that. And that would be one unit out, so it would be one here. So in this case, the xy coordinate would be zero movement left and right, so zero in the x direction and one in the y direction. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? So what does that mean? It means that the sine, oops, I'll do it around the right way. The cosine of 90 is equal to zero and the sine of 90 is equal to one. Bosh. Is that okay? Tan 
is undefined. So tan of 90, it's because the rise is effectively a, um, a rise of one for a run of zero and dividing by zero is uh, error on your calculator. So it's undefined. Does that make sense? Can you go to your table of values, please, and fill those in? And that's effectively your first quadrant of angles now fulfilled. It's because you have an excellent teacher and nothing to do with the fact that you've probably just matured in your understanding over time. I prefer the first. I prefer the first. Look, I'm probably as guilty as any. I've just done it a number of times. You know what the thing is? The difference between me and other teachers is that I actually found it quite difficult to get myself when I was your age, which is why I find, actually kind of find algebra a bit, it's probably my most difficult area to teach students because I'm very much a, but you know, it's just obvious, isn't it? And everyone's going, oh, it's cool. Whereas the things that I'm not very good at, statistics, probability and, and unit circle stuff, yeah. I'm probably better teaching it because I've, I, you know, I can feel your pain. Anyway, go for it. You've got three problems there. See how you go. Unit circle, think of coordinates, bosh it out in three minutes. We'll move on in three minutes. Grab food as you need to for the next three minutes. I feel like I'm doing an intermittent fasting approach to you in this class. Intermittent fasting. Uh, yes, go for it. You can probably figure out why I gave you those three. So where is it? On your, just visualise it on the axis. Think of your x, y coordinate and your gradient. And um, just as a bit of an extension for those who don't need the time, give me what the sine, cos and tan of 450 degrees is.
Okay, that's over time. If you want to grab some food, grab it and then we'll continue. Four fifty. Okay, so let's have a look at it. I'm going to zoom out. No, no, I'll just slide over actually. Um, so here's so what I encourage students to do, and it's with these simple problems, it's absolutely worth doing to get the habit of, is that when you've got one of these problems, oh, sorry, I'll just wait till you're ready. kind of getting to the point, if you watch back on these last three or four videos, um, you'll see there's heaps of times where I'm pausing waiting for people to come to attention. If I have to treat you like a grade seven and move you, I will. Um, what I encourage students to do is when you have one of these problems where you need to work out an angle beyond 90 degrees, is to draw a little diagram. Um, and then the diagram will assist you in remembering what you need to do. It really will. Um, it'll become more important when I actually give you a value and you have to work out the angle. Um, drawing a diagram will help you work out where those angles could possibly be because there'll be more than one, like the ambiguous case. Okay, so we'll get to that on a later date though. So sine of 180 degrees. So we can see here, I'm just going to verbalise it rather than write it in. Um, we can see here that the xy coordinate will be um, negative one zero. And therefore, um, the x coordinate is negative one. The y coordinate is zero, and the gradient is zero. No rise for a run. Zero over negative one. All good. Same same deal. That's what it looks like for two seventy. It's a three-quarter angle. We can see that the xy coordinate is 0, comma, negative 1, isn't it? It's just up and down, yep. So the sine of 270 degrees is going to be negative 1, it's the y coordinate. The cosine, <clears throat> excuse me, of 270 degrees is going to be zero. There's no x movement at all. And the tan of 270 degrees is going to be undefined because it's up and down. Gradient doesn't exist. I reckon it makes lots of sense. Sine of 360, you can have a look at the, I'll just zoom out really, so you can see all three at once. You can see that when we get to 360, we've done a full rotation. So we're back effectively, excuse the flip for quickly, uh, just quickly. We're kind of back to this green text here, aren't we? It's the same scenario, just with a different number. So 360 is equivalent, 360 is equivalent to um, zero. Okay, we've come full circle. And you can see by, by the diagram why that is so. So the sign of 360, well, that's the y coordinate, and there's no movement in the y direction, so it's zero. The cosine of 360 is one. The tan of 360 is zero because there's no slope. Bosh. Any questions? Rosie. So if you have a look again at the tan of 270, here it is here. 
so it's on the board or on your screen, you can see that the slope is basically all rise with no runs. So if we look at the literal definition of a slope as being rise over run, that would be a rise of one for a run of zero, dividing by zero is undefined. Does that make sense? Cool. I'll just put those notes there. So we've got a slope, slope is, or gradient is equal to 10, which is rise over run, which is one over zero, which is undefined. Okay, thanks for that clarifying question. Any other questions before I move on? So the extension, <clears throat> which I haven't prepared for, so I'll just do it really quickly. Um, the extension was the sine, cosine, oops, the cosine and the tangent of 450 degrees. So when I look at this and I do my little rotation -y thing, then what I'm doing, I'm always starting from zero and I'm going counterclockwise. So 90, 180, 270, 360, 450 degrees gets me there. Okay? My line will be one unit long. So it's positive one here on the y-axis. And so the rest is just a matter of going, okay, cool. I know what the coordinates are, match them up. So I'll have the sine of 450 degrees equaling one. The cosine of 450 degrees is equal to zero. The tan. 450 degrees is equal to undefined. Done. So what you have now is an ability to work out the so sine, cosine and tan. Well, not an ability. We've now extended our understanding of sine, cosine and tan from zero to infinity, but not beyond. So zero to infinity. Okay, we can handle now as long as, uh, well, we can understand why it would work. I wonder what this would mean. I'm going to give you a minute to chat with your um, with the people around you. One minute, go. Rosie, feel free to move. Rosie, this is your first time dealing with all this stuff, isn't it? Whereas they, they've seen it last year. Is it okay so far? No. Is this going to Just ideas first, and then we'll then we'll calculate it. No, 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 not yet. Don't need to. Okay. That's enough talking time. Um, can I pick on you? I'm going to pick on Rosie, and you can use this if you want to, to describe how she's interpreting the sign of negative 30 degrees. So see if your Ambrosia and Zoe, see if your interpretation reflects Rosie's. And I picked on Rosie because she hasn't done it last year, so she's not recalling it from memory. She's just figuring it out, which is exactly what I want. I don't care if she gets it wrong or not. So you're thinking negative 30 degrees is just going backwards. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. The 330 thing you don't need so much, although you, it is true that both of those angles would be equivalent. So going backwards 30 would be the same as going forwards 330. That's perfect. But remember what I said about how we work out angles. 
uh, sine, cos, and tan. It's always the triangle that's made between the x-axis and um, and the uh, the line that makes it up. So that means that if we were looking at this triangle here, I'm just going to trace it in red. Oh, darn it. That's a really bad tracing. Like that, with a hyp hypotenuse of one, that would be our right angle triangle there. So in other words, the sine the cosine and tan of 30 degrees will work for the sine, well, will work for negative 30 degrees. Now, if you've got a question, Jeremy, go for it. Otherwise, I was, I was going to unpack this further anyway. No, no. Either you're saying something I don't understand or you're not saying the right thing one way or the other. Can I put a pin on that and you can, because it's probably just a clarification with a particular approach. Let me deal with this approach first. Let me get some clarity around what I want to say and then ask questions, yeah? So what we have here is if we just remember that our sine, cosine and tan is now dominated by our understanding of where the coordinate lies or the gradient for tan. So what we really want to do is we want to say if the sine of 30 is working backwards, correct, right way to think about it, and it means that our unit circle line length 1 stops there, what's the x and y coordinate? Well, the x and y coordinate is going to be determined by the angle between here and here, which is 30 degrees, okay? So the sine of 30 degrees, uh, sorry, bigger pardon, sine of negative 30 degrees is equal to, we just need to work out the positive and negativeness, right? So I'll leave a bl blank there, but it will be the sine of 30. The cosine of negative 30 degrees will be equal to the cosine of 30 and the tan of negative 30 degrees is equal to the tan of 30 degrees. I haven't put a positive or negative on it yet, but in terms of understanding what I've done there, does that make sense? Okay, because the angle is the same, negative 30. Yep, okay, cool. So keeping that in mind, then we just need to work out positivity and negativity. So again, we would do this in our head and we would say, thinking about the unit circle, what's the x and y coordinate doing? Well, the x coordinate is positive. So it's, I'll explicitly put it in, but you wouldn't normally. Positive cos 30. The, the y coordinate is negative. So it's negative sine 30. And look at that line. It's going down. Negative tan 30. Done. Well, not done, done, but that's the hard bit done. Sine of 30 is? Is it? Okay. So it's negative a half. Cos of 30 is? So it's positive, oops, positive root 3 on 2. And tan of 30. So it's negative root 3 on 3. Just thinking about x, y, and gray. Straight line common sense. What do you think? Okay, next thing for you to think about and to talk about with the person next to you. Link it with all the stuff we've been doing so far. Go. Oops. <clears throat> There's nothing special about 250 degrees. Talk it through. One minute to talk with the people around you. Once you get one, you'll get the three. 
Less than a minute left. That's time, but I just want to very quickly do attendance. So you've got, if you want to grab some food, do it really quickly. Tara, have you got an answer? I'm going to pick on you in a sec, okay? Okay. Thank you. That was really good. I said okay and then everyone, nearly everyone was quiet straight away. So thank you for that. Tara, what did you, or whoever you're talking to, what did you guys come up with? So let's, let's I'll, I'll just do a name correction there. Let's call it the third quadrant. Yep. Third quadrant, so you're, you're counting them from the uh, top right, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So it's quadrant three, yep. What else? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anything else from anyone else? Archie. Um, that that adds on to what Tara's saying, yeah, for sure. Yep. No, okay. So either you, either you didn't get it or you just agree with everything that's been said, so it's great. So um, pretty much we can say that's 180 plus 45, that's 180 plus the 30, and that's 180 plus the 60. So the idea here is that if I just draw a um, – sorry, I'll keep it zoomed out. If I just draw uh, some a quadrant here, this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Um, by the way, I just clue you in, Rosie. Um, one of the things we can say is that because y is positive here and x is negative, and the gradient would be negative, it means that only sine will be positive. Here, the gradient will be positive, but it's it's uh, negative x negative y. So only tan would be positive. Here we have positive um, x coordinate, but a negative y coordinate, and the gradient would be negative. So only cosine is positive, and in the first quadrant everything is positive. So what they learn um, in maths uh, extended is C A S T. So it's called a cast diagram because it makes the word cast. Um, but sometimes that's a bit of a crutch for people to you know, gets in the way of their understanding what's going on. But if you ever hear us call, talk about the cast diagram, that's what it is. Okay, so that's why um, uh, Archie said, no, was it Archie? No, it was uh, Tara who said it's in the tan quadrant because it's the T bit. No, no, I'm just saying that's why. Um, but, yeah, third quadrant is what you would call it. Um, so 200 and take the first one, 225 degrees would end up being here, wouldn't it, something like that? So I'm just going to draw a little curve like that for 225 degrees. That's what we're interested in, but we can see that the overrun between the x-axis and the line is 45 degrees. So please remember, always, 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 we're looking for the angle that's created, but the acute angle, to be precise, between the x-axis and the line. Always, never from the y-axis, always from the x-axis, okay? That's really important that you um, get that right. So we can see that we've got a 45-degree angle between the x-axis and the y-axis. This becomes our reference angle, okay? 
So just like we've done um, in previous times, let me do the first one, then I'll give you a chance to do the other two. We would say something like the sine of 225 degrees would be equal to the sine of 45 degrees because that's the reference angle that's made with the x-axis. The, the coordinate, the y-coordinate would be negative in that quadrant and so it's equal to negative sine 45 degrees and we know that the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 on 2 so the sine of 225 degrees is negative root 2 on 2. What I've written there as opposed to what I've said, what I've written there, yep, that's what we need to do. The cosine of 225 degrees is equal to negative cosine 45 degrees because the x coordinate is negative. So that would be negative root 2 on 2. And the tan of 225 degrees is equal to the, the, um, the tan of 45 degrees positive because the gradient you can see it in that in slide 14 the gradient is left to right going up so we know it's positive and the tan of 45 degrees we know from our uh, our work is equal to one and do you know what else i love about this 45 degree thing by the way everything sort of um works out uh, exactly as it should do it makes sense that a 45 degree angle would have a rise over run of one unit per one unit it's rising as quickly as it's running. So it makes sense that the gradient is one. It all works out really nicely like that. Anyway, um, so that's sine, cos and tan of 225. Can you please have a go at doing sine, cos and tan of 210 and 240? This is your time to grab food as well. Does this lesson finish at 10.35 or 10.40? 10 okay. We've got seven minutes, so this is like a, almost a perfect finish. 10.28 by my watch. I said seven, didn't say 10. One more minute and then I'll just quickly go through the answers to wrap up.
Okay, based upon that conversation, it means I've given you enough time. I just wanted to remind you guys that if you're just not table people, like you can't just memorise a table of values, and you can see even in today's lesson and 20 years after I've got my teaching degree, I'm still uh, uh, keep on forgetting the old um, angles and which ones are root three onto and which ones are a half. Can I just remind you that, gee whiz, that doesn't take long to do. Little right angle triangle. If it's 45 degrees, it's root two, root two, one. If it's a um, half an equilateral triangle, it's 30, 60, root three. On, and it, that bottom one's a half, so that makes the other one root three on two because I know it's half and root three on two. I just can't remember which way it goes. And then so in like 30 seconds, I've got my little diagrams ready to just use them. So much easier than mem memorising a table in my opinion. Anyway, lots of soapbox moments today. I apologise for that. Um, so you needed to work out the other ones, didn't you? Now what did you have to work out? Yeah, 210 and 240. Okay, so the sine of 210 degrees will be equal to? Good. Yep, negative sine 30 degrees. Sine 30 degrees is equal to opposite. Now, using this diagram here is using opposite. So it's a half, so it's negative a half. Cosine 210 degrees is equal to? X coordinate is okay. I'll just say I'm, I'm waiting for someone to fill it in, but they're not going to. Negative cos 30 degrees, which is equal to negative root 3 on 2, because my little triangle up the top there says um, tan tan of 210 degrees is equal to tan of 30 degrees because the gradient is positive, which is equal to. Root three on three. Yep. Okay, the next bit should be um, easier. So the sine of 240 degrees is equal to negative sine of 60, which is equal to negative root three on two. The cosine of 240 degrees is equal to the negative cosine of 60 degrees, which is equal to negative a half. And the tan of 240 degrees equals negative tan 60 degrees, which equals, oops, not negative. Sometimes your raised tool is a bit hard to get to, which is equal to positive root 3. Bosh. Okay, so that's it. Next one, homework, six problems for you to do by Tuesday. I'll give you some proper long form homework next week. But that's your homework is to do those six problems. They will be um, uploaded to Google Classroom in a second if you want to grab them from there. Um, I, more importantly, write a note to yourself so you don't forget to do that homework. Thank you, Jeremy. That almost sounded sincere. Once you've written your homework down or made, or made a, a note in your calendar to check Google Classroom, you can head off. Have a wonderful weekend. People, people who have food here, take your food away with you. And I'll see you Tuesday. Merry Christmas.